Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode. My name is Dr. Paul and today we're talking about failing the ice. So if you failed the ice and you're not 100% sure why, this video was made for you. Before we get started, I want to remind you that you can download my brand new Step 2 CS book absolutely free. Just head down to the description below, click the link, and it's yours. All right, so let's dive in and let's talk about if you fail the ICE, what are the possible reasons? When students fail the CIS or the ICE, the unfortunate thing is the USMLE on the CS doesn't tell you why. They don't tell you that your note wasn't good enough or that you didn't gather information or that you didn't, you know, um, show enough empathy. They don't give you feedback. So it's really important that you can look at your performance with a critical eye. Most students, when I ask them if they, if they know why they failed, typically don't. They think they did very, very well. And of course, most of us think we did well when we take our exams. So you have to really stand back, look at your performance and, and be very critical of everything you did. And that's really the only way that you're going to figure out what you did. Unless, of course, you come to me and um, I assess you or we go through a course or a mock or whatever. But typically, you want to take a look at how you did and you want to ask yourself, did I do this? Did I do this? Did I do this? And if you didn't do something in particular, that's probably why you failed. So let's take a look at what I believe are three reasons why students typically fail the ice. They are, and this isn't in any particular order, but information gathering, information sharing, and then of course the patient note. So what do these mean? Well, information gathering typically means the quality of the questions that you ask throughout the interview. Now, the best way to make sure that you never screw up this section, and some students hate this, but it's to use mnemonics. Students typically hate using mnemonics because they think it makes them feel robotic, when in fact, it's a blueprint for what you're going to ask. You're not supposed to go through every single letter and ask it robotically. You're supposed to use it as a guide to what you're going to ask. So, if you're using mnemonics, in my opinion, you're automatically going to get 95% of the questions that you need to ask asked because those mnemonics provide you with that blueprint. So it's highly important that if you're going through the encounter and you're not really 100% um, sure if you're asking all the right questions, use mnemonics. It'll guide you as to what you need to ask. So there's really no excuse for having poor information gathering skills. The next is information sharing. Information sharing means conveying the messages of what you are perceiving the problem to be to the SP, but in a more layman way. Meaning, if you think that they have, let's say, uh, cholecystitis or cholelithiasis, you don't say that to them. You say, I think there are gallstones, or I think you have an infected gallbladder. So, when you share information, number one, you need to make sure that you're clear so that they understand you need to make sure that you're direct. You don't want to beat around the bush and, and, and not really say something. For example, if cancer is a possibility, you don't want to tiptoe around that and, and have them ask you. You want to say it is a possibility when you're talking differentials, okay? So you want to be clear, you want to be direct. And then the third part of information sharing is when they ask questions, answer them thoroughly. You never want to blow off a question. You always want to answer it thoroughly. So if you're doing that, then the information that they want from you, they're trying to pull from you, you're openly giving it to them. And so it's very important that you thoroughly answer questions thoroughly, okay? If you're not doing that, check out my video on answering and challenging questions. That'll give you a blueprint and a strategy for how to tackle these challenging questions and scenarios so that you are thorough enough to satisfy what the SP wants. The last part is, of course, the patient note. This is probably the most common reason why students fail the ICE. The patient note is super important, and there's a lot of possible reasons why you could fail. Some of the big reasons why students fail um, include the following. Let's say, let's just start, I'll just go randomly off the top of my head. Poor differentials, okay? Your differentials need to be strong. They need to be well supported by the information that you gathered in the encounter. So that's another thing. Let's put poor support. Okay, so these two sort of go hand in hand. Another common reason why students fail the note is lack of detail, especially in the HPI, 
right? You need to be detailed in that HPI to the point where the person reading it doesn't have any questions remaining. You don't want to leave anything to the imagination of the reader. You want all the details to be there so that they know exactly 100% what is going on and what you did in the encounter. Okay, so lack of detail, that's important. Another one is just poor spelling and grammar. You can't have a note riddled with errors. It takes credibility away from you as the person documenting the information. So if you aren't properly document, if you're properly documenting, but you're spelling errors and grammatical errors everywhere, it, it sort of pulls the credibility from you because the person reading thinks, okay, there's details here, but everything is so sloppy and misspelled. Can I really count on them to give me quality information when I couldn't count on them to give me quality spelling and grammar? Something to really think about there, okay? Um, another one is a poor structure. This is another one. And this is a, a huge one in my opinion. When you write your note, you want the structure to be nice and neat. When someone's reading your note, you don't want them to look at it and, and, and automatically think to themselves, I'm going to have to really try hard to figure out what's going on here. No, you want the information to be super easy to maneuver and, and, and identify. So, for example, some students, when it comes to the HPI, let's say, they'll put a few bullet points and then they'll write a few paragraphs. That's not how this is done. You want to make sure that when, whether you're using bullets or paragraphs, that it's nice and neat, right? You want, that, you want it to be pleasing to the eye is really what you're aiming for here. Then your review of systems, you want it to be nice and neat, okay? Then your past medical. All of this information, okay? What you should do is you should preface all of this information, meaning you put past medical history, colon, info, allergies, let's just say no, no allergies, meds, let's say none, social, this is your weight, appetite, diet, smoking, alcohol, drugs, travel, occupation, exercise, stress, then you have your physical exam. Depending on what you do here, you should do the same thing. Preface it, CVS, pulmonary, let's say um, abdominal. Information, information, information. Then you have your differentials. The way I recommend you do your differentials is by putting the differential, so let's say we have differential number one, and then you put your support under in bullet points, okay? Some students, what they'll do is they'll write the differential and then write out lines of information. You could do that, but I recommend you just do this. Make it super easy for them to um, see what you're doing. Bullet points. Number two differential. Bullet points. And then, of course, you have your workups at the end. You can just list those there, okay? So what you want is you, you want it to be pleasing to the eye so that the first thing they see when they look at your note is nice structure. Uh, it's clear to see what's what, and they don't have to sort of dig around to figure out what's going on, okay? So if you fail the ice, I want you to, like I said, Go and look at your performance with a very critical eye. Did you gather information properly, thoroughly, and adequately? Did you share information by being clear, direct, and thoroughly asking questions, answering questions? And then finally, the patient note. Were your differentials strong? Were your support strong? Was your detail sufficient? Was your spelling and your grammar correct? And finally, was your structure good? If you go through and you really criticize yourself, you'll probably find that one of these wasn't up to par, wasn't really where it should have been to ensure that you did well in this component, okay? So that's it for this. I hope that you found this to be beneficial, and if you did, please like it below, subscribe so that I can send you alerts whenever I release a new video, share it with all your friends and colleagues who, who, who you think could benefit from this, okay? I really, really hope that you found this to be beneficial. Thank you for stopping by. We'll see you on the next episode.